In humility. We offer our worship to you, O God. In expectation. We seek the direction from you, O God. In hope. We gather together before you, O God. In humility, expectation, and hope. We anticipate your blessing, O God. I'm not sure that children's choir was having any fun, but we appreciate them joining us in worship this morning as well. I did forget to remind you that when I left Coffee Hour, Suzanne had three casseroles that she will be back there if you need to pick those up. And today is also Make Your Own Casserole Day. You can get those pans as you exit the worship center today and make your own casserole in addition to getting one of those last three if they are still back there after worship this morning. Our hymn is number 455, Come All Christians Be Committed. Hymn number 455.
Please pray with me. God of grace and God, God of mercy, mercy. Receive, receive our committed lives as we, as we place them before you today. Grant that our good intentions will become reality. Place within us a desire to change the world through faithful service. Place within us a desire to love as we have been loved by you. Place within us hope without which we cannot survive. This we pray in the name of our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, God calls and enables us to fill the world with God's goodness. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who have reverence for the Lord. Those who greatly delight in the commandments of the Lord. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses. Their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. It is well with those who deal generously with each other. The righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm and secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their Lord is exalted in honor. Amen.
Good morning. It is so wonderful to see so many folks out here today in church and especially all of our uh, young boys and girls in uniform for Scout Sunday. I want to give you a little bit of an understanding of what Scout Sunday is for those who are not familiar with this. And we've been doing this now since the centennial anniversary of the Boy Scouts uh, in 2010. So I want to uh, give you an idea of what Scout Sunday is all about. Boy Scouts of America annually celebrates its founding on February 8, 1910, based on the program uh, started by Lord Baden-Powell in England back in 1907. Scout Sunday was added to the Scout celebration in the mid-1940s, and it's a way for the boys to honor the 12th point in the Scout law, which is Boy Scouts. What's the 12th point of the Scout law? Reverend. Reverend, exactly. We're doing our duty to God by recognizing the 12th point of the Scout law of Scout is Reverend. Now, Girl Scout Sunday is typically conducted in March during their anniversary month, and it gives girls the opportunity to attend their place of worship and be recognized as a Girl Scout. Uh, these days can also be a time when girls can uh, explore other faiths as well. Matter of fact, I understand that um, uh, St. Mary's of the Lakes is doing their Scout Sunday service at 1030 this morning, so if you want to rush out there, that's fine. Um, anyway, here at the Protestant Community Church, we've been celebrating Scout Sunday service since the centennial anniversary of the Boy Scouts, and we combine the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts together uh, as a joint celebration. Uh, this is also an opportunity for us to thank the Protestant Community Church for their support for over these many years in hosting many of the Scout meetings here on the facilities. Uh, the Boy Scouts typically use Memorial Hall and our Venturing Crew program, which is the uniform I'm in. This is the, uh, the co-ed program for the boys and girls from age 14 up to 21. So Girl Scouts, if you want to join us when you turn age 14, that's good to go as well. All right. Uh, but we want to thank the um, facility. We want to thank the church here for the use of their facilities throughout the past year. And I also want to recognize uh, all the volunteers and all the parents especially of all of these young scouts who have supported their uh, youth in the program and who have brought their youth here today to church. Now this is the part where I'm going to have audience participation with the scouts here. So in a moment I'm going to call you all up here to the front so that we can do our scout oath and promise together. But I want to talk a little bit about what we're about to do. We're going to be talking about our oaths and our promises today. And an oath is a promise or a pledge. It's a declaration of intent, a sacred commitment to a worthy cause. The legendary Knights of the Round Table took an oath to protect the weak, defend honor, and establish civil order. Their word became their bond and held them first to duty. And there's a modern parallel to these Knights of old, the present-day brotherhood of boys and men, of girls and women, who bind themselves to honor and to duty with the taking of an oath, the Girl Scout Promise and the Boy Scout Oath. Um, just as a note before we get together, boys and girls, after service is over, I do need uh, uh, to uh, share, I'd like to have everybody gather at the end of service uh, so that we can take a group picture. And also, for their participation, uh, there is an annual Scout Sunday patch that each youth will receive. So I want to make sure that everybody gets a, a youth patch before you all leave today. I may not have enough, but I want to make sure that all the Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts get them, and then I'll get them to the Boy Scouts later on. So at this time, I'd like to ask all the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts to come and join us at the altar. Photo up, photo up. Jason, where are you, Jason? You gonna come with me? I just wanted to point out that Tim, my Eagle Scout here, this is going to be his last Scout Sunday service with us because by next year he'll be at school uh, in college somewhere. So uh, I wanted to thank him for all of his years of supporting uh, the Scout Sunday service. Now, boys and girls. He forgot to mention that I'm also aging out in less than a month, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, boys and girls, I'd like for you to look out in the congregation first. 
And I want you to notice this as I ask everybody who has ever been a Boy Scout, a Cub Scout, uh, a Girl Scout, I'd like to ask all of you, those who have been touched by scouting, to please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Look at all the folks around here who have been touched by scouting. It's incredible. Look at, all the, look at all the folks in the choir back here, too. Isn't that awesome? Boys and girls, this is, what, this is the brotherhood and sisterhood that you're going to be joining as you get older. All, practically everybody here. That's incredible. Awesome. Please have a seat. Thank you so much again for your support of scouting. We even have uh, Lee Baluk there who still fits into his uniform, which is really awesome. Okay. In your programs, ladies and gentlemen, you will see um, a printout of the scout the Girl Scout Promise and the Boy Scout Oath. So I'd like for you all to, to join with us as each of the girls uh, will recite their portion of the Scout Promise and then we're going to have one of the girls who will come up and read the, um, the phrases in between. Annie, do you have some way of doing it? They're going to do it from here? They're going to do it from here together. Okay, that's very good then. All right. So girls, do you have your Scout sign that you see? Okay. Annie, you want to lead them in that thing? You can all join them too if you wish. God and country. To help other people at all times. And to live by the girl. Okay, and uh, for the Boy Scout Oath, we're going to have Jason O'Neill come up. On my honor, on my honor I will try. Oh, crap, I read the wrong. <laughs> Begins the pledge a call to personal integrity and personal honesty, which are only found in purity of heart. I will, I will do, do my, my best. best. My best. Not what is convenient or acceptable under the circumstances, but one, but one's best, unequal, the highest standard of performance. To do, to do my, my duty. duty. To be at my best. Post, regardless of sacrifice or cause, disregarding danger or ridicule, to God, to truth, to conscience, to the divine spark which inhabits the human heart, and, and my, my country. country, my country, bought and paid for by with the blood of my friends and ancestors, a duty for a debt which must be paid, and, and to, to obey, obey the scout law. law. A law which is based on honesty, virtue, and strength of character. To keep, to keep myself, myself physically strong. Because I know that the body and the spirit are one. And to diminish physical strength is to decrease spiritual strength. Mentally, mentally awake. awake. Mentally alive. Mentally challenged. Always seeking, ever wanting to know and understand. And, and morally straight. Regardless what others say or even what they do. I will v value virtue, for virtue is power, an unseen force that moves men as well as mountains. Okay. Thank you, boys and girls. Please have a seat, and don't forget to come right back at the end of service, all right? Thank you all very much. I hope this is an indication that the future is in good hands. It seems to be, and we certainly appreciate these scouts coming to share with us and their leaders who invest so well in them. It's a privilege every year to see this service uh, and to celebrate with the lives who will run our world in a few years. The hymn is number 344. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hymn number 344.
both salt of the earth, but the salt has lost its taste. How can its salt, saltiness be resorted? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out of a trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city built on a hill. Cannot be hidden, no, no one after lighting a camp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives you light to all. In the house, in the same way, let your light shine before, before others, so that they may, may see your your good works to give glory to your Father in heaven. Do you not think that it could have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I think wait, I have come not to abolish but to fulfill, to fulfill for truly I tell you until heaven the earth pass, it, pass away not one letter, not one stroke of the letter will pass from the law until it is accomplished. Therefore, how, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does, the te whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks again to our scouts for leading and participating in worship today and for giving us bright hope for our future. Thanks guys and ladies for being with us today. Some of you know that one of the great heroes of my faith is the Cardinal Joseph Bernadine. Bernadine spent part of his career as the Archbishop of Cincinnati and part of his career as the Archbishop of Chicago and was a prolific writer. It was in his writing that I discovered his own sense of his life in ministry. He said at one point that what he realized in working with people is that in fact when he went to be with people, he was representing the presence of God. In fact, he said for some people, he was the very presence of God. And even for other people, he would be the only God they would ever encounter. The only picture, the only sense that they would ever have of this person that we call God. I think that's something of what Jesus is trying to say to us as His congratulations continue today in the Sermon on the Mount. I think in declaring us salt and light, He is trying to say, you are God's representative. You are the only God that some people will ever encounter. You are essential to helping the world get a sense of who God is and what God does. That's why as Jesus continues His congratulations in the Sermon on the Mount today, I think they sort of turn rather elemental and they specifically focus outward. They're elemental in the sense that Jesus is talking about two things in His world that were absolutely essential. Salt and light in a world in which we live now, in which neither of these are that difficult to get, we're not as aware as Jesus' early listeners were to how important salt and light can really be in our world. When we can simply run down to the store and pick up some salt, it's not as big a deal in a world where salt was traded as a precious commodity. When we can simply 
turn on the light and expect that it's going to work, it's not as big a deal as a world in which there was no power grid, or even in our world today in a lot of places where the power grid is not quite as reliable as it is in our world. So we take for granted these elements of salt and light, but many in our world cannot, and certainly many in Jesus' world could not. And the idea that we are salt and light means that we are something essential to the survival and advancement of the world. As salt, we are the flavor of God that helps others to get a taste of who God is and what God does. As light, we are the force that helps the world to see and be able to move in the direction of God. And so Jesus says to us in the sermon today, congratulations, you are the very things that the world needs in order to be able to know who God is. It's an awesome responsibility. It's an awesome privilege. It's a great task that God has given to us all. And we'd all do well, as Cardinal Bernadine did, to recognize that this is who we are. That this is what defines us. That this is why we have been created. I think in these congratulations too, though, we'd all do well to remember that salt and light are two of those things that do their best work when they're least noticed. You know, sort of like game officials in football and basketball and those sorts of places. When they do their job and you don't know that they're even there, that's when they've done their best work. And that's also true of salt and light. After all, if one gets too much salt and the taste is overpowering, one turns quickly away from that and doesn't want to take any more of that. If one gets too much light and is blinded by that light, then the light is more a problem than a help. Yes, too much salt and too much light overpower. And too little salt and too little light Underwhelm. So one of the challenges in our life of being salt and light, in our life of representing the presence of God to others, is to know just how much salt we need to be, just how much light we need to bring, just how much of God that people can bear, which I think also should help us to remember that the personal preferences for salt and light are as different as there are the number of people. Some people like a lot of salt. Some people like a lot of light. I can remember in our days in East Tennessee, Shannon and I often went to dinner with a couple, and whether we went to a hamburger joint or the fanciest restaurant in town, the first thing these guys did when the food got to the table was pick up the salt shaker and pour salt on top of it. In fact, what they typically did when we got to the restaurant where we were going to eat is they looked first to make sure there was salt on the table so the salt would be immediately available. They were people that liked a lot of salt in their food. I'm one who doesn't like so much. My personal preference for salt is that whatever is cooked in the food will be quite enough. Thank you very much. There are others of us who when it comes to light, like a lot of light. We like for the world to be bright and we like to be able to see everywhere that we go. And then there are others who prefer just a little light. And the struggle we have as the salt and light of God in the world is to know what those personal preferences of people are, to be attentive to how much salt they need and how much light they need, and be able to function in a way in which we provide just what is needed for people, not too much or too little. Congratulations, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth the very thing the world needs to know the taste of God.
Congratulations, you are the light of the world. The very thing the world needs in order to be able to see and move in the path of God. Congratulations, you are essential to the world's survival. And then Jesus concludes these congratulations in this part of the text with a rather strange little discussion about the law. I was interested in the individual who read this. He struggled with it as much as I struggled with it when I read it because it's, it's, it's hard to read. It's convoluted. It wasn't your fault. It, it's just difficult. And the whole discussion of Jesus regarding the law seems to be difficult. But here's the word of congratulations I think Jesus is giving at that point. And I think it's simply this. They were accustomed to a law that was seen externally. They were accustomed to a law that simply directed their outward behaviors. They were accustomed to a law in which you saw people knew the law by what they did. The word of congratulations to Jesus regarding His fulfilling of the law is that it will no longer be externally seen in people. Instead, it will be the sort of law that works from the inside out. It will be a law that's written on their hearts that will change who they are and govern how they behave. And it won't be so much about what people see as what people know about one's heart. Congratulations, Jesus said. The law just became something that changes you from the inside out, not from the outside in. Jesus' words of congratulations are much like the words of my hero, Cardinal Bernadine. They are words that remind us that in fact we are the representatives of God. That in fact we are the very presence of God to some. That in fact we may be the only presence of God that some people will ever see. May God give us the grace to be the kind of salt and light that will help our world to understand God better. May God give us the hope that the law will change us from the inside out and create us as a new people in the image of God. May God give us the courage to be for the world what it needs, to get a sense of the presence of God that it doesn't already have, to get an idea of the path of God that it doesn't already know. Congratulations! You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And may God bless you as you give taste to the world. And as you give direction from the light that shines out of you to the world. Amen. We come to this point in our service today to receive an offering. May God bless the gifts that you've brought to give this day.